Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar. This is Vaisal Kujaman, Head of Data Science and Healthcare NLP Lead at, at John Snow Labs. So today uh, in this webinar, I'm going to go over automated summarization of clinical notes, why we need this, how we do this, and then the, I'm going to introduce the latest models that we uh, that we released like a week ago uh, as a pre-trained clinical summarization model. So let's start with what text summarization is all about. You know, uh, text summarization is one of the main uh, NLP tasks out there. So the idea is to condensing the original text, like a lengthy text, into a shorter and more compact, dense version, while still retaining the most important concepts and information and meaning at the same time. So the idea is to get the gist of the entire text. We do this every time, right? Uh, not just for uh, work, but we do. We try to summarize the content to be able to understand better, to memorize them uh, efficiently. So there are two techniques when it comes to NLP for text summarization. There are two techniques mainly. The first one is extractive methods. So extractive is based on the keywords and then the key phrases. So we basically identify and extract the most important sentences and phrases. This is usually the statistical one. So uh, we try to find the most salient token or phrases within the uh, within the document and then try to build a new, try to extract the sentences that would represent the entire meaning uh, of the uh, document without losing so much stuff, right? So the other one is abstractive, which is the hardest one, because in abstractive, we kind of generate a new text based on the content of the original text. So we are not just using, we are of course using this uh, uh, signals within the document, but we try to generate a new context. Maybe we try to, uh, we, we even uh, rephrase the entire sentence and then club them together to create a new, new, new summarization. That's why abstractive is a little bit trickier and a, a hard problem, but with the, with the advent of BERT architectures, right, transformer architectures, uh, it's uh, right now we are able to do uh, this, especially with the GPT, right? It's, 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 it's total generative. So today I'm going to focus more on the abstractive methods because the extractives uh, is out of the topic. And then it's, it's already, we already have many other models that you can achieve the same with the extractive methods. So uh, since we are going to cover the summarization of clinical notes today, because Spark NLP for healthcare is all about healthcare. And then we try to solve the problems uh, in healthcare domain by developing these kind of models. So summarization is just one of the uh, 1,000 pre-trained clinical model in Spark NLP. In Spark NLP, we have more than 1,000 pre-trained clinical models, including eminent recognition, relation, extraction, and uh, assertion status, that you can do a bunch of other stuff. You can go and then check our website for this. But uh, the summarization is a latest test that we included uh, especially with this LLM storm, right? We we started to work on this, uh, and then we have now a new nice model uh, regarding summarization. So why do we need why do we need summarization of, uh, right at the first place? So because while trying to summarize the patient notes or the contents that is generated within the clinical uh, facilities. The idea is to improve the communication among healthcare providers, right? Because if because each healthcare provider have different templates, different schema, different contents, which would be really hard to understand if, if, if they are not condensed in a shorter version or summarized in a standard format. So, and then uh, if there are five pages of clinical report, you need to be fast. You may not have a time to read all of them. So it, it, it also facilitates the effective decision making because you need to read and then understand and then move to the other topic. So its benefit, of course, it's obvious that we are trying to reduce the time spent on manual documentation. Uh, and then uh, if you find the clear pattern while summarizing, it's also helpful, right? Because as a physician, you reflect, you, you bring your own experience to the table and then you, uh, you, you find the key point, key phrases within the document that shouldn't be missed uh, next time. So that's why summarization has, a, uh, has, an, uh, has a, another benefit to find the key trends and patterns. Uh, and then of course, uh, if human is involved in this process, it's also uh, error prone, right? Because the latest research shows that, especially after GPT-4, uh, human 
uh, could also make mistake more than the machine when it comes to summarization. Uh, because when you summarize one content, the other day you might summarize it another way, you don't have a consistency over that. Uh, and then you may make a mistake because your summarization uh, may not be uh, representative for another physician. So that's why uh, there will be differences, there will be disagreements between the humans. Uh, and, then, and then summarization is trying to reduce this kind of errors. Of course, this is a challenging problem, as I explained before, because you need to you need to maintain the patient privacy at, at first while trying to minimize this, while trying to summarize this. Uh, if this is not a de-identified document, you, you may want to, uh, you, you may accidentally expose private patient information, PHI data. Uh, there are some abbreviation medical terminologies, like healthcare has its own language, which is which is not even clear for uh, English speaking people, right? So that's why uh, even the handling, the medical terminology and the abbreviation while trying to summarize the content is another challenge. Uh, and then uh, developing these uh, algorithms, of course, needs to reflect and then cure all these deficiencies, all these challenges uh, while, while keeping the, uh, while keeping the uh, entire content, entire meaning of the document without reading anything. So you don't want to end up with a situation while trying to summarization. You don't want to end up in a situation that you lose key points because it would cost more than reading the entire document if you accidentally drop some key phrases. So to visualize what the summarization of a document would look like in clinical domain, I just used ChatGPT to show you some examples. So these are the contents that I got from mtsamples.com. Website, left hand side is a radiology report, right hand side is a clinical report, some discharge report. So I just asked GPT 4, which is the latest state of the art uh, conversational agent, right? So uh, it's uh, and, and it's nice to summarize actually. By the way, in, while we're developing our solutions, uh, we of course manually summarize and also got help from Chat GPT as well, but we mainly created our own data set. But while doing calculation, we compared ourselves with ChatGPT as well to see if we are going to do better than this or uh, on par with this, right? Because ChatGPT is not trained on a specific healthcare context. It's trained on an entire corpora uh, outside the world. So uh, anyway, on the left-hand side, uh, a radiology report is nicely summarized. It's just uh, picking the key information and then building a, you know, a summarizing in a, conversational manner, which is good. So I just, this is the prompt, by the way, summarize the following radiology report. If you need a specific template after summarization, of course you can provide more information, but I just wanted to give a, a zero shot prompt. So no no prompting, just, I just, I just uh, ask, summarize the following task, uh, text. And then it's, it, it did really well. On the right hand side, clinical report, same here. So it is kind of rewriting the patient history from uh, layout uh, from a, a one page text into a story, which is easy to remember as a human. And then it is, uh, it is dropping the repetitive ones and then, uh, and then only keeping the key points over there, which is good. So uh, let's see uh, what the other people do about this because this is an active research area. Uh, and I just took a snapshot from a text summarization uh, page of the papers with code.com. As you know, this website uh, has all the different NLP challenges and then the benchmarks. Uh, Spark NLP itself has many benchmarks over there as well when it comes to name language recognition. For text gener text summarization, there are different tasks because each, because even on this website, you have a benchmark corresponding to some data sets. So there are more than 40 different summarization data sets that people try to compete uh, and uh, compete against. And then I just pick one, like a PubMed one. As you see, T5-based models and BART-based models are leading the domain right now. So when it comes to text summarization, we can say that uh, T5 uh, and BART-based uh, transformer architectures are leading the summarization. Why am I highlighting this? Because I'm going to compare our solution with this, uh, these two architecture as well over there. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the evaluation metrics. When it comes to summarization, it's uh, it's hard to find the right metric uh, because so it's 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 a, yeah it's not an objective uh, task. 
So you need to summarize the medical text in a way that would be helpful for your own use case. So your metric might differ from, uh, from case to case. So, but most of the time there are five metrics that people are usually using. On the left-hand side, you see these five metrics. On the right-hand side, you see all the other metrics uh, that uh, other papers are talking about. So there are more than 30 different metrics out there for the evaluation. But uh, we, we usually report the summarization uh, performance with ROC or BLE or, or BIRT score. So uh, which we release our models with these three metrics as well, by the way. So what ROC means is that it is basically counting the number of overlapping textual units. So this is not a good idea, of course, because you well, while you are doing abstractive summarization, you may have you may have low level overlap because you you don't need to use the same word because it's a contextual it's an abstractive summarization you may uh, mean the same thing with different words so the rock score may not be represented over there so birth score is kind of handling this because it is calculating the similarity scores by aligning the generated and reference summaries uh, reference summaries like a grant root versus predicted summaries on a token level since tokens are already impacted by the context in which they live right uh, you're right because the the embeddings the birth embeddings of a token uh, it will be impacted by the other token uh, other neighboring token because because it's a contextual embedding so that's why uh, if you get an embeddings of the original uh, text and then embeddings of the uh, new summary, and then you calculate the similarity score, uh, if the distance is not that high, uh, which means that you did a good job over there. Uh, but of course, birth score is not enough itself because you can just replicate the same and then you can have a high birth score. So that's why you need to uh, uh, you, you need to penalize the bravery or or repetitive words. That's why we have a Baleo matrix and then mover scores. You can find this uh, table and this detail on this paper that I give. By the way, at the end of the webinar, we will share the notebook and then this uh, slice as well. So another criteria while evaluating the summarization is that since it is not objective, it's it's. It's like, it's like subjective. We have some quality dimensions in summarization. We call them coherence, consistency, fluency, and, and relevance, which I'm going to explain in the next slides. So uh, researchers are usually trying to find the correlation between this, uh, this quality dimension versus this, this analytic metrics. Uh, to see if if they are if they are correlated well, as you see, like rock three is more correlated with the consistency, but less correlated, uh, less correlated with the relevance score. So that's why uh, it depends what you want to achieve for your own use case. The quality will be will be uh, will be uh, will be not uh, same for everyone. So now let's compare this summarization methods and quality dimensions. So summarization methods is, as I explained before, the, the leading ones are T5 and BART architectures. So we have, these are all mostly deep learning based architectures. Uh, when it comes to summarization algorithms out there, if you just go like Hugging Face or some other summarization papers, you will see that most of the time they are revolving around these ideas that you see on the left hand side. And this table shows the, the, the correlation or the scores of the quality metrics per algorithm that we are going to cover not right now on, the, on this table. For example, uh, Pegasus has the highest fluency score. Uh, actually, BART has the highest one. Uh, and then the TFI also really high uh, fluency score. But, but and then when you compare the coherence and consistency, you see that T5 is doing really well, all about out of five, above four. So when you go to Pegasus, Pegasus is one of the summarization algorithms developed by Google, uh, and it's also doing really well, much better than T5. And BART is also doing well. So which means that we can say Pegasus, BART, and T5 are the top leading summarization methods out there. So what coherence is that? Uh, it is basically checking if the summary is well-structured and well-organized. It needs to be concise, 
uh, it needs to be coherent, right? So the consistency is factual alignment. It shouldn't produce garbage. It shouldn't hallucinate. So the uh, the factual factuality between ground truth and summary should be the same. Fluency, of course, no no typo, no formatting problems, easy to read, uh, no grammatical error. So this is fluency. And relevancy is only keeping the inform uh, important information because you only need to worry about the key points, the salient uh, phrases within the document. So you need to, you should be on a on a level that you don't include any uh, any useless uh, phrases into your summary. That's why if you have the golden pot of all these quality dimensions, you will, you, which means that you will have a nice nice summary at the end of the day. And it's great that we are we are doing these are human, by the way, like human rates. So uh, humans are rating is each algorithm and looks like uh, summarization is a well-defined and already solvable problem. So it's not cryptic anymore. So in Spark NLP for healthcare, we released five summarization model. We based our models on Flantify uh, for different purposes. We created some data sets internally, and then we trained different summarization model to solve different problems. Since Flantify is not like a billion parameter model, we use the base version. Uh, base version is 250 million parameters uh, because we need to run everything within the Spark NLP ecosystem. So we cannot just load this into a 32 gig machine. We need to run this on 12 gig machine. Uh, and then we need to run the summarization algorithm uh, along with all the other NLP algorithm, NLP models that we have in Spark NLP. So you can build a pipeline with document assembler, sentence detector, tokenizer, NER, you can build everything. And then uh, you can also add, add summarization uh, into your pipeline and that should all work. And then they should all work within the JVM because Spark NLP itself is written in Scala, right? But we have we are using Python wrapper here. So that's why we pick the base version, uh, which is performing really well. And then we fine tune this. Uh, we, we, we did some uh, we did some noisy augmentation over there to, to make it more uh, realistic in the clinical settings. That's why we have human physicians in the team that who are checking the uh, machine generated summaries and then fixing and then retraining again and again. So we basically have four main models. One of them is augmented. Uh, the first one is summarizing the clinical notes, discharge notes, radiology reports, uh, anything that is produced in the healthcare providers by the healthcare providers. The augmented version is we use some open source data sets to augment the backbone and then uh, train with our own data sets. The, this backbone is some, some data sets, CNN news data sets, etc. Uh, and then uh, fine tune with our own data sets. Uh, the clinical question is, uh, which, which, like, which is my favorite, by the way, imagine that you, uh, you get some calls in your call center from the patients that they wanna, they ask questions and it might be one page of question or just a two sentence question. So you you, you just wanna uh, summarize this with uh, briefly, right? You may say, okay, what's the patient asking about? So that's why we train such a model. This is highly useful for the social media text, by the way, uh, if you have, because people start to share their uh, health history online uh, since the COVID, and then there are there's so much jam out there right now that people are sharing information, exchanging information. So if we can summarize this, uh, and then use for your own purposes, that would be a, a really helpful for your own use case. The the other one is especially useful for the biomedical research researchers who are reading PubMed articles every day. You can build a pipeline and include this summarizer to summarize the PubMed abstract. So rather than trying to read the entire abstract, you can just summarize and then look for the key entities that you are interested in. And then the last one is generic one. Generic is not clinical. So it is the backbone plus some uh, fine tuning uh, in non-clinical context. Uh, we add this to compare the clinical one so that if you, are, if you are not working in the clinical domain, you can still use this. Okay, that's the point. So we have a notebook for this, uh, which I'm going to cover today as well. Uh, I'm going to show how to run the pipeline and how to compare with the other approaches. So this is how clinical text summarization look like. So we have some discharge note. Uh, you can find this on the demo.johnsonovest.com, by the way. You can find this example. 
we have more than a hundred different demo app over there, which is static. You can just go ahead and then check without even typing anything. Anyway, we have a discharge note and we have the summary here. So uh, as you see, it's, it's, it's nicely done. We, since we have two models over there for the clinical text summarization, uh, when you go to augmented, you get a longer context. When you use the slim version, you get a shorter version, by the way. So let's see the biomedical text summarization. So biomedical text summarization, this is an abstract from PubMed. Now, rather than reading all of them, you can just read the summary and summary is successfully uh, uh, summarizing the entire abstract so that you don't need to read the entire abstract over there. So uh, we calculated some, you know, blood score, rock score and birth score. Uh, to make sure that uh, the, this is all uh, at the level of state of the art, by the way, which I'm going to share the metrics right now as well. And this is the medical question summarization. Medical question, there is a patient, there is someone, I don't know if he's patient, so he's sharing this information online. He says that uh, his sister had a very bad uh, tummy ache and crying, etc. And then he is, he is talking many irrelevant stuff because this is an unstructured medium, right? He is talking or she is talking many irrelevant stuff. And then she is asking some specific question over there. So the question is what causes diarrhea, right? And then the, another one is uh, the patient is asking uh, WP, PW after surgery. So rather than reading all of them, if you have a pipeline to parse, to scrap all this social media content and then and then summarize with this model, you might get some kind of like a rough idea about what people are talking lately. So here are the metrics. We compared our solutions, this latest models, uh, especially this summarizer clinical GSL and augmented version of a summarizer with the other uh, high performing ones. As you remember, I was talking about Pegasus, BART and T5. So we compared our solutions with them. And then as you see on the ROG and blue score, we are doing really well uh, compared to other methods, which means that uh, the overlapping the engrams are, and then also keeping the uh, bravery is doing really well here. Uh, so we are doing better when it comes to clinical context because these models are not trained. The other models are not trained on clinical context, but we tested this on a clinical context. We picked 10 documents from Mimic data set, we, 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 we summarize this with GPT-4 and then summarize with all these algorithms that you see on the slide and then compared our results. Uh, we assume that the uh, GPT-4 is doing really well uh, and then we use this as a ground truth. Uh, of course, we at first, because it's 10 document, we check manually and then we so to be to make it reproducible so that you can test this on your own end. You can just get a prediction from ChatGPT, but in real world settings, of course, you don't want to send your sensitive information to the OpenAI, right? But anyway, just to, just to reproduce everything that I show here, you can just get a pre uh, prediction from uh, ChatGPT and then get prediction from our uh, algorithms and then compare. We have a notebook to do this, by the way. Let's do the same with the birth score. Birth score is, uh, you know, contextual uh, distance. Uh, so as you see, they are more or less doing good, but uh, the last two bar, GS, uh, summarize the clinical GSL and augmented version is doing well compared to the others, especially when it comes to the recall. Uh, by the way, uh, ChatGPT also suffers from the same. Uh, its precision is high, but when it comes to recall, it's not doing well. We, we noticed this while, while evaluating the name identity recognition algorithms over there. Uh, because when it detects something, its 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 factuality is fine. Uh, if you because this, because summarization is not not something not not open ended because summarization the information is already inside the document. So when you ask a model to generate a summary, you are kind of asking to rephrase the content in a brief format, right? So which means that it doesn't have to go beyond this. So that's why uh, we don't suffer the hallucination here that much. But what we suffer is uh, we usually skip the important concept, concepts 
which is the uh, which is the pain point when it comes to clinical summarization. But our models are probably uh, since we fine tune this on uh, clinical context, it's doing well when it comes to clinical summary, uh, clinical context. So let's see both of these model how they do on the same content that we gave to GPT-4, right? So I calculated the F1, F1 scores as well between original versus GPT-4 generated summary versus this one. And augmented version returns the longer version, as you see. So we have a patient uh, with different, uh, different tests and impression by the radiologist. So it is just creating, a, it is just rewriting the story right now based on this content. And then the slim version, the, the raw version of uh, Summarizer's clinical GSL is the shorter and much concise uh, and, uh, and doing much better uh, compared to the chat GPT. So that's why uh, not compared to, like according to chat GPT, it's doing much better uh, against the augmented version. So this is a clinical text uh, in the, the, the second example. We have a patient who have different medical history and now he, she needs to get some medication. Now we summarize this and then uh, I don't need to know all the detail, right? I don't need to see the date. I don't need to find know the, you know, some dosage or root information here. I just need to know the most important um, concepts that I need to keep in my mind as a physician. So that's why uh, the slim version is doing really well right now. And then uh, this one produce higher score, of course, but if you want the concise version, this one is preferable, according to me, my opinion. Now, this is how it looks like. I know you, it might be hard to see right now, all of them, but I just got a prediction from the same original document by each algorithm that we tested against. So we have Flanty by base, we have uh, we have, uh, by the way, this is T5 base. One of them is T5 base. One of them is full and T5 base. Uh, Bart Large, Pegasus, Samsung, which means that Pegasus fine tuned on Samsung summarization data set. Pegasus XSAM, so, uh, and then Bart Large. Uh, and so this is the uh, most closest one on the clinical context, by the way. It is doing decent but it is still including many irrelevant uh, header information as you can see here by using spark nlp sentence splitter or uh, section detection uh, modules as well you can just split your document into different sections and then send the sections to the summarizer which means that you can summarize each page each uh, section again and again which means that you don't need to summarize the entire page but uh, just section by section, you can do this within the same pipeline. Okay, so let's go to the notebook. Uh, now I'm just trying to cover for the next maybe 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to cover the notebook uh, we prepare for you. How you can reach out to this notebook? This notebook lives in Spark NLP workshop repo. We have a workshop repo. Uh, this workshop repo, you will see, uh, you will see tutorials. And then uh, you will see certification trainings and healthcare folder. Uh, you will see notebook 32.1. By the way, if you are interested in the other topics, we have more than 50 different clinical, uh, 15 different notebooks, collab notebook that is talking about different tasks for in clinical NLP. I, I highly, I strongly suggest you go ahead and then check because it is uh, highly eye-opening if you are working in this domain on a daily basis, like the identification, OCR, entity resolution, Medicaid risk adjustments, etc. Okay, let's get back to the original topic, medical text summarization. So how, uh, this is a collab notebook. As long as you have a, you have a license uh, from Spark NLP for Healthcare, you can just go ahead and then uh, go to the website and then get a license, by the way, try license. Uh, or just email to info at johnsonovest.com. Anyway, uh, I started this notebook with by testing the open source version set first, open source, open source summarization model. Uh, so I just type two, the same, the same notes, one discharge note, one radiology note. So I just created some dictionary here to keep track of all the, all the summaries so that I can, I can tabulate. The output. The first one is Plantify based Samsung. I shared the links here as well in the notebook. 
uh, some details, some metadata, uh, the number of parameters, and then the reported metrics, because each one of them also has some reported metrics according to the evaluation metrics I covered before. So let's test the first one. First one is Flantify based sum sum. And uh, it is returning, given the radiology node, it is returning this one. Okay, so as you see, it keeps the uh, header information as well, and it is it is not being well as far as I see. Let's do the same for the clinical uh, discharge node. It is summarizing, but it, it 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 lost entire context. It's just one sentence right now, which I wouldn't want to have if I want to summarize that long context, right? Because it's it, there is no way that this would this would give me an idea. And uh, Flantify base, let's test the base version. Uh, this is the original version released by Google. And it is also doing not good. You see, both. So let's do with the Pegasus. Pegasus also not doing good. So as you see, these are the one that are doing really well when it comes to non-clinical context, according to the metrics that I shared before, right? So I covered Pegasus. BART and Flantify, and they are not doing well on a clinical context, as you see. You can test with your own text, by the way. These are all coming from Hugging Face. Now let's jump to the Spark NLP, okay? So I'm going to cover how you can run these models in Spark NLP. If you have a license, you just, up, you just start running this cell, you upload your JSON key, and then you will be able to start using this. You don't need to worry about the rest because we pick everything from that JSON key that you get with your license. You have your Spark session here. You start the Spark session with your key. When you have the session, you have two stages right now needed. The first one is document assembler that you feed your entire document. The second one is the summarizer that you want to uh, that you need to feed the output of the document assembler as an input. So, uh, if you are not familiar with the notation in Spark NLP, we have input columns, output columns, and all the other parameters that you can play with. Input is basically uh, since this is a pipeline concept, we get an output from the previous stage and then use this use here as an input. If you want to summarize the sentences, not the document. You can use sentence detection in the middle, and then sentence detection will just send the output to the summarizer, and then you will be able to summarize the sentences, not the entire document. Uh, it accepts uh, like 1024 tokens. This is transformer based, or like this is because this is not token like a word that you might see, as you know, in, in word architecture, in transformer architecture, right? There are some. Uh, different tokenization over there. So, but you can kind of make it like one-to-one -one right now. So you can feed a uh, two page of document probably. So 1000 token means that it's 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 two pages, almost two pages, two full page. And you can set up to 512 as an output. So you can generate summary up to 512. Uh, you, can, you can shorten it as well. You can just say that, okay, give me 100 tokens. Uh, it's it also works. So and then uh, you build the pipeline and then you fit it into a light pipeline, which means that you can deploy this via light pipeline by by overriding the Spark overhead. So it will be used just like any scale learn or PyTorch uh, model without using any Spark overhead. So I suggest you use light pipeline all the time. So anyway, I just annotate my radiology text. And this is what it returns. Okay, so this is the clinical text, and this is what it returns. So it is doing well. I already shared this in the slide, by the way. So this is the augmented version, but this might be seem longer given the radiology text. It might have more information. Maybe you are looking for a shorter version. We have the base clinical one, which is returning a much concise uh when it comes to clinical context so i prefer this one but when we run large scale benchmarks augmented version did much better by the way on a on a larger context so how we compare this i just collected all the predictions from all the other non-spark and rp based models and then uh, with our versions and then i just you know i just created a table with uh, with all these predictions so this is original context. And these are the predictions from each model. 
So you can do the same on your own end. This notebook is uh, totally, re totally reproducible and then you can even uh, save your results and then uh, load somewhere as well. Then I calculated birth score. There is a nice library, birth score library, which I showed at the top of the notebook that you can just pip install. Pip install from their Git repo. Uh, it is using Roberta embeddings to calculate the embeddings of each token uh, to calculate the cosine distance. And I just did this and then generated generated scores. Okay, so given Spark NLP base clinical GSL on the GPT-4 generated radiology summary, our birth score is 95, which means that it is almost same as GPT-4 when it comes to summarization. Uh, same on the radiology text. So this one is augmented version. Augmented is doing a little bit worse, like 2% worse than the base one. Uh, BART is doing 91. It's, it's also doing close to the GPT-4, but not as good as uh, clinical ones do. Uh, and this one is, uh, let's check, this one is uh, again on the clinical text, not the radiology, but the clinical text, it's 92. And so, so to be able to run the other, other summarization models, you can just change the name of the model here. So we have, we have summarized the clinical GSL. The first one was the augmented version. We have clinical question. For example, I just, in the clinical question, I just fed this, you know, uh, social media post uh, or health forum post. And then this is how it looks like, a long one. Then when you read this, when you summarize this, you get this nice summary. It's just, she's asking for treatments for hyperthyroidism, which means that you don't need to deal with all the, all the uh, long contacts here. So the biomedical one, you just change the name of the model and it is downloaded. And then from now on, you can just use it in one liner, right? This is how you, how you call it. This is the entire abstract and this is how you get it. Okay, so uh, we are done here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you wanna uh, check the slides, we will be sharing the slides as well. You, you, you can go ahead and check the notebooks as well. You can go to our, the, uh, our demo page as I'm sharing right now. You go to nlp.johnsonovest.com slash demos. You will see tons of demo applications here. I got snapshots from this medical text summarization. You can also check medical text uh, medical text generation and question answering demos as well. Or you can even go ahead and then check the our entity extraction, right? So these are all nice tool set that you may want to use if you are working in healthcare and on a daily basis. Uh, uh, Thanks for joining the webinar. Uh, please uh, ask any question if you need. I will be around during while you are watching this webinar. I will be around to answer your question. Thank you.